Hi, Peter Charles here of Hook Fly, fly fishing. And today I'd like to talk about the role of our leaders when we're fishing streamers and bucktails. And it's not about turnover. I think we should pay a little bit more attention to the other things that make our leaders important. And I'll just let's deal with the turnover right off the bat. Here's one of my black nose day weemer patterns, okay? I'll hold it right, right there, get an idea of the size. I can throw this like a dart, right? If I wet this fly, I, I, no wind, I'm just saying in a, in a hallway, for example, I could probably throw this 30 feet, throwing it like a dart if it was wet. I know I can get over 20 feet with it dry. And that's in the basement here when I, ha I can't throw it high because it'll hit the ceiling. So if I had room to throw it high, I'd probably get 40 feet out of it if it was wet. Now, imagine trying to throw this dry fly like a dart. Well, I've tried. I get about six feet. That's the reason why we have trout leaders for our dry flies. We need leaders to turn over those dry flies. So even the small wet flies, small unweighted nymphs, all that kind of stuff have no very little momentum and wind resistance will knock them down quickly. If you're casting into a wind, if you don't have turnover in your leader, it's not going to turn over. So we need these leaders to make trout flies turn over, especially dries. Do we need that for streamers? Obviously not. If I can throw this thing like a dart, if it was wet, 30 feet would be no problem and I could probably get more if I didn't have a ceiling to worry about hitting. So these things will go on their own. We don't need to think of the leader turning them over. You can put as long a leader as you can get away with given the conditions, the weight of the fly and all that kind of good stuff. So you can fish very long leaders on these. And now there are some considerations uh, about using longer leaders. So first off, and I've talked about this before, I have a video on it. I'm not gonna get too much into it again. And I'm not gonna get into leader formulas because it's not about formulas. I just go out and buy myself some fluorocarbon. Uh, it's meant for conventional fishing and I get these spools and I load my own spools and you know I this is what I build my leaders on while I'm in the water. I normally uh, use two-part leaders if I'm staying six seven eight feet and if I'm going over eight feet I'll get into three-part leaders and if I'm getting super long around 14 feet 15 feet 16 feet then I'm using four-part leaders uh, and that's about as much as I'm going to say. Sometimes they're equal uh, comp uh, shares, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Equal segments, thank you. Uh, other times I'll do like 50% bot and the rest I'll break down evenly. That's, that's basically my formulas, they're pretty simple. So what am I really after with these leaders? Well, primarily I'm after fly movement. That's number one. Depth is number two. And three is separation from the end of the fly line. I feel that you can get, especially with something like this, which is a, one of my downforce flies, um, a fly like this on the end of, a, say, a 10-foot fluorocarbon leader in walking uh, pace current is going to be running a foot deeper than the end of the fly line on average. So you're getting extra depth. So it means if you've got a long leader and a fly that will get down, you can actually run with less of a tip which is great for casting and great for everything. So you can use less tip and more leader and get deeper. So that's on the depth end. On the fly movement end, okay, this gets a little complicated. And this is my own theory, all right? I don't have any empirical evidence. Okay, so don't go running out and going, oh, there's a study over here. No, it's simple. If I've got a one piece leader, which a lot of people will do, a one piece leader, let's say four foot long, uh, if you, you know, read any of the literature about West Coast Steelhead, it's like four foot or three foot of maxima and you're good to go. I want you to think about fly movement on the end of a leader. So the fly is being kicked around in the current, and that's an amplitude of its movement. It'll move this far. The shorter the leader, the less that amplitude, all right? So the longer the leader, the bigger the amplitude. And the other thing, if I was to graph the amplitude of the leader, it would look something like this. It's like a, a half a parabola. Now, 
here's the thing what I get into is I build tapered leaders, yet, where are they? I'm not talking about turnover. These are tapered factory tapered leaders. And I'm not worried about turnover, but I'm still tying tapered leaders. And one of the reasons for the tapering is I feel it fits this curve of how the leader moves. So you've got the fly moving a lot, measure a foot down the leader, it's moving less, move, measure two foot down the leader, it's moving even less. And I feel that if you taper your leader, it fits this curve and it allows more movement or better movement of the fly than if you just used one straight piece of mono. And the longer it is, the more the movement will be because it has the freedom to move. When you tether it to a relatively short leader, you're just getting a little wiggle and that's about it. I, I mean, when I've watched my uh, brown trout weemers in current and, and it's a, let's say a lazy current and they're just doing this business side to side. It's great, wonderful motion. And it's because the leader is long and it's tapered. And I don't go with thick leaders. I go with as thin a leader as I can get away with. So I, I'll be working, let's say, 15 pound butt to an eight pound tippet is a perfect example. And that way I get very, very uh, good movement out of my fly because it's not tethered. I'm working with eight, 10 foot long leaders uh, and you know they are very, very fine. Now, there are exceptions. If I'm working with a heavy weighted fly, like, where is it? Uh, should have got out ahead of time. Here we go. My headstander. I mean, that's got lead eyes, and that rabbit wing, when it gets wet, is going to really soak up the water. I do shorten the leader and thicken the leader when I'm casting stuff like this. But it isn't for turnover. I'm overhead casting these, and what you get into with long leaders and weighted flies and flies that absorb a lot of water is you get bouncing behind you if you're not careful. The longer the leader it, you have, the more easy it is to lose the connection between your end of your fly line and the weighted fly. So if you get starts bouncing back there, you're going to find your casting will go to pot very quickly. So the shorter, thicker leaders allow me to stay in contact with the cast. So when I'm building my leaders and I'm on the water and putting something together, I, I push that as far as I possibly can. And I think with those head standards, I can get up to about eight feet. And after that, I'm running into trouble. But as long as I keep, you know, within reason, I can cast them without it bouncing back there. So it's really a casting problem when you go up to heavy weighted flies. If you're dealing with something like this, which really slicks down when it's wet, 15 foot leader, no problem. Roll it back there and away you go. It'll turn over, it'll work just fine. So often when I'm using two handed rods and spay casting, I've got 15 foot leaders when I'm casting flies like this. So what I'm after, as I say, is I'm after the fly movement. The next thing is depth. When you're working with fluorocarbon, uh, that is dense. Fluorocarbon is dense. I talked about this before. It's a lot denser than mono. So when you put fluorocarbon in water, it sinks. It doesn't hold the fly up, which I've seen. I've had unweighted streamers held up by mono leaders. I've used these things here. When I got into fishing streamers, I didn't know any better. Well, originally, I just used a straight piece of mono that I pulled off on my Mitchell 300. But when I started trout fishing seriously, I had these tapered leaders and the thick butt section would actually hold my, my, I had a sink tip, the sink tip sank, the fly sank, and the thick mono at the top was still stuck in the surface tension. So by using fluorocarbon, we avoid that. So you get more depth. And if you're using a downforce fly like this, you'll get more depth or even a weighted fly like my head stander that will get down just because of the weight. And especially since it's tied Clouser style, that helps to plane it down as well. So you can get some extra depth the longer you make the leader. And if you use fluorocarbon, it won't impede the sink of the fly. And the other thing, which is a big thing for me, and it, I started doing this the very first time I fished a sinking line, a level sinking line when I was a teenager, sitting in my buddy's boat, little tin boat, in, or at his father's tin boat, in the middle of the St. Lawrence River. I, I caught my first smallmouth bass, or my first fish on a fly, and it was a black ghost. I always remember that. It was, I, that stuck in my head, that it was a black ghost. It was a level type three sinking line. Instinctively, I knew I didn't want a leader this long. I wanted as much separation between that brown line 
and the fly, and I I must have pulled off something I ate somewhere between eight and ten foot of uh, mono off of my Mitchell 300 and tied it on the end of that sinking line, and caught my first bass on it. So I'd been a believer in long leaders right from the beginning, and I've had friends out west who've always been short leader guys start fishing long leaders and went wow, I'm a long leader fan now. So you're get, if you get separation between the end of your fly line and the fly, both vertically and horizontally, you're going to get more of the fussy fish, the fish that are turned off. You're not going to miss the aggressive ones with the short leader. They're going to whack it no matter what. But when you're dealing with fish that are a little less aggressive and maybe put off by something, don't get the fly line too near them. You know, you're just asking to be put, having them put off. And a lot of people, are, especially with sink tips, they don't realize how their sink tip is being curved in the current because they only see the floating section and they don't realize how much their sink tip is lagging. And if you've got a short leader, your sink tip could arrive before you fly, which is never a good thing. So the longer the leader, the more separation you get, the better it is. So let's recap that. I'm not after turnover. This fly goes like a dart when you throw it. I mean, it doesn't need the t leader to turn it over. It'll go by itself. So what I do want is I want movement, I want depth, I want separation. And that's the role for the, the, the streamer leader. And that's the reason why I don't use short one-piece leaders. The other reason I don't use, and the, the, the ecological reason really, is that if I'm going to break off a, a fly because it's on the bottom or in the mouth of a fish and it breaks me off, I don't want six foot of mono on the bottom or trailing off the mouth of the fish. So if I am working with a tapered leader, I'm got, if I lose you know, the end of it, I'm losing about that much, and sometimes I don't lose that. And the reason for this, of course, is a, a, a perfection loop on, on the end of the um, mono is probably a weaker knot than the knot you've used to tie the fly on. So it's more likely to break at the perfection loop than it is to break at the fly. So if you're using six foot of straight mono, there's the odds you're going to leave six foot of straight mono on the bottom. And that's not a good thing. So I've got actually built in a breakage point that says I'm going to lose about that much or, you know, thereabouts and not more. And maybe not even lose that if it breaks at the fly. So that's something to think about is that, you know, let's think about also what we leave on the river bottom or trailing from a fish. And to avoid that as much as we possibly can. But basically my primary driving force is get that, you know, movement of the fly, get that depth out of it, and get some separation. And that's what I want out of my uh, streamer leaders, and that's why they're long. They're not little tiny ones. So keep that in mind. Cheers.